the 50mm f1.8 is arguably one of the most popular lenses ever made, and it's certainly up there for me. For many, it's their first true photographer's lens, because it's so good, yet so affordable. But might we not be using it to its full potential? As I just mentioned, I absolutely love the 50mm f1.8 and it's probably one of, if not the most used lens that I have. But I've been guilty of not getting the most out of it, as a lot of people have. Now this lens is probably one that's in your arsenal if you're a photographer, pretty much everybody has got it. And because of its price, it's used by an awful lot of people, especially beginner photographers. And if you are a beginner photographer, then you could be at risk of not getting the most out of this really versatile and beautiful lens. Check out these conditions, man. They're uh, absolutely glorious this morning. Beautiful purple heather everywhere and a glorious golden sunrise this morning. And not that much wind, consider we're pretty much on top of the world here. You know, we're on the highest hill for miles around. There's not that much wind this morning. It is a little bit chilly though, considering we're in the middle of the summer. It was single figures on the car temperature gauge this morning, so I'm glad I've got my hoodie with me. I was considering just coming in a t-shirt this morning because we've had some uh, beautiful hot weather, but not today, that's finally ended. <laughs> By the way, you're looking at the face of a man who got up at 4.30 this morning for the sunrise. I absolutely love summer, and I love summer photography as well. I'm one of those people that absolutely loves the greenery of summer, but I must admit, I'm looking forward to having some later sunrises so I can get up a little bit later. <laughs> Sorry that I'm looking down. It's very stony here. And if I don't look down, if I look at the camera, there's a very, very risk I could fall over and either break myself or my camera. I am talking to you though. Anyway, let's talk about this problem that you might have with your 50 mil f1.8. Now it's such a versatile lens because it's a very natural looking focal length. It's very similar to the focal length of the human eye. And because it's got such a wide aperture, that f1.8, it means that you can have really fast shutter speeds and you can have a really nice blurry background, bokeh as it's called. But if you're always using it for its wide aperture, then you're really not getting the most out of your lens. A lot of people, when they get their 50mm f1.8, they only ever use it at f1.8, its widest aperture. And there's two main problems with that. Now, I've come to this location here to demonstrate my point. This location is known as the Devil's Chair, this beautiful rock formation that looks out over Wales. You can see for miles and miles from here. And this beautiful sort of bowl shape here, this is known as the Devil's Chair. Now, the reason I wanted to demonstrate here is a there's loads of heather up here so as a landscape photographer naturally i'm drawn to that at this time of year <laughs> it's all blooming absolutely lovely now and what i can do here is i can use that wide aperture to demonstrate my point so first of all let me demonstrate why f1.8 isn't always the best aperture to use on your 50 mil f1.8 so i found a nice spot to shoot this scene from we've got all this lovely heather here in front of me that i can use as a nice bit of uh, foreground and then we've got the rock formation as the subject and this is a really good demonstration here of why f1.8 isn't always the best aperture to use let me show you what i mean we'll take our first one here at f1.8 now because we've got a f1.8 we can use really good shutter speed so i can do all this handheld which is always nice not getting my tripod off there we go so that shot f1.8 and what you'll be able to see there is that the rock formation itself isn't at its sharpest. Now, because of YouTube compression, if you're watching on a phone screen, you might not be able to see it exactly. But another thing in a high contrast scene like this, where you've got a bright sky and a dark rock formation, you get chromatic aberration on a lot of 50mm f1.8s. And that's a really common thing. Uh, not all of them, but if you're buying these because they're affordable, if you go for a more affordable one, then you'll get chromatic aberration. This is a quite a good one, this one. Uh, this one's got a metal back to it, which means it's quite an expensive one. But even with this more expensive one, you still get chromatic aberration at its widest aperture. And it's true of all lenses, pretty much. 
even some really top end ones, if you're using them at their extreme ends, so either down to F22 or as wide open as F1.8, then you're gonna have a slightly softer image than if you use it in a more reasonable range. So let me demonstrate that now. In fact, let me take the bag off. So just by closing down by one stop to F2.8, still get really fast shutter speeds, still get a really nice amount of blur in the foreground, but the subject is much, much sharper and there's no chromatic aberration whatsoever. I think that's really valuable uh, when you're using your 50mm F1.8. And as regards that point about having natural background blur, this is particularly important in stuff like product photography and portrait photography when you take pictures of people. Now, I, there's no people around here this morning. It's beautifully quiet. So I'm going to take a picture of my bag as a substitute to demonstrate my point. Now, at f1.8, if we get a picture of this, lovely bit of bokeh on this one. Very nice. Light is just catching the uh, label as well. Perfect. I might send that to Osprey, see what they say. <laughs> now, f1.8, there's a lot of background blur. But once again, it's not the sharpest that this lens could do. And there's almost too much background blur. You can't really see what's happening behind it. Whereas if I just stop down to f2.8, take exactly the same shot. It's still a really nice looking image. It's a really nice amount of background blur, but it's really sharp on the subject and it's not overdone, that sort of background blur. Sometimes when you see some photographers take it to the extreme with their aperture, it doesn't look like a natural picture. Whereas if you just use the right amount of bokeh in the background, then your images will be a lot more natural looking and in my opinion, that looks a lot nicer. Now that's my style of photography. A lot of people like really, really blurry backgrounds in their images. That's absolutely fine. That's a creative choice. But for me personally, I like a natural sort of looking blur in the background. And tell me what you think down in the comments. The other thing to remember as well with this lens, which is true of all lenses, is that its absolute sharpest is in the middle of its aperture range. If you use a lens between sort of f9 and f13, then you're going to have some really sharp images. That's true of this lens as it is of every other one. So we've got a really distant rock formation here, I can see on the horizon, uh, and there's just nothing but heather in between here and there. And now I want to get all this heather really sharp and in focus. So I stop down to sort of f11, right smack bang in the middle of its aperture range. What that means is I'll get a really sharp photo and I will get the absolute best out of this really, really good lens. Let me show you. A really sharp image, front to back, all because I'm using this really good lens at its absolute best. You could do exactly the same. If you own this lens or any other lens that you really love, don't just use it for its widest aperture, its most extreme ability. If you use it, in sort of its mid-range of what it's capable of, then you'll get the best out of it. Now, I'm not saying you can't ever use it at its widest. I do all the time. But just bear in mind that it's a really versatile lens, so use it for what it can do. So just before we uh, end the video, I just want to uh, give a little bit of thanks to you subscribers for, you know, sticking with me on these videos and everything. I've left this part to the end because um, it weeds out all the people that really care. They all leave early. Uh, so just an expression of thanks. I've picked up a few new ones recently and uh, I do genuinely appreciate it. It's not going to be long now before I hit the thousand subscriber mark. I hope as long as I can keep up at a decent pace and a decent quality in my videos. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put in a little thank you at the end because uh, I don't want you thinking that I forget about the people on the other side of the camera. So thanks very much for watching uh, my videos and sticking with me. If you want to watch a video where I first sort of demonstrated the 50mm f1.8 and then watch this video here, but please don't judge you for it. It's quite an old video, one of my really early ones. <laughs> uh, it's done really well views-wise, but um, I 
was still learning uh, YouTube and videography then, so it really isn't my best quality one. But I enjoyed making it, and hopefully you'll enjoy watching it too. I'll see you next time.